Once you'll have sufficiently mastered the Spark, as much on the software standalone as on the physical controller, one of the first things that you'll surely want to do will be to use Spark in a musical project on a generalist audio MIDI sequencer. So, without further ado, let's go see how all of this is set, for example, in Cubase 5. You'll find in your Spark manual a brief description of the Spark getting started for the various sequencers such as Cubase, Ableton Live, Logic Pro, Digital Performer, Pro Tools. I'll show the material here with Cubase 5. Once the sequencer started, you need to add the Spark software in the VSTI instruments window or via an instrument track. Let's add it by the VSTI window. We can create a MIDI track associated to Spark. Let's deactivate the host function here in order to avoid conflicts between the Cubase sequencer and the one from Spark. From now on, a few possibilities are offered to us. In the previous video, we've already seen how easy it is to export the patterns in audio by doing drag and drop of the patterns toward the Cubase audio track. For the follow-up of things here, let's choose to export our patterns in MIDI datas. Now, we notice that the exportation is done in MIDI. Therefore, if I want to, I can edit directly the MIDI data of the pattern to change its nature. However, the exportation in MIDI doesn't take in charge the automations which accompany the patterns. But never mind, we can, without question, automate the instrument's various functions inserted on each pad by activating the standard automations recording. On Cubase, you got to arm here the little red W, W for right. You just have to trigger the MIDI sequence pattern and to move the desired function. As we hear in the cycle replay, the automation is easily heard. If we wish to disactivate momentarily these automations, you need to take off the little green R, R for read, as it's the case for any VST instrument plugin on Cubase. If we want to edit our automations curve, you need to select the Spark track and to right-click and to show Indicate the automation. So we can after with the pencil tool or the various Cubase writing tools rewrite our automation curve and this has an immediate impact on the sound. To erase completely an automation, you need to select the line and press on delete of the computer's keyboard. Whereas with the internal standalone sequencer of the Spark, it wasn't possible to record the generated effects with the pad effects, it becomes possible now with Cubase to record, for example, a filtering movement. You need once again to activate the automations recording here to trigger the sequence and to do a filter movement on the physical controller's pad.
We can even change filtering modes during the automation's recording. If we want to automate the slicer function, the procedure gets harder but not impossible to do. For the current Spark 1.4 version, the various slicers modes are solely heard when Spark's internal sequencer is working. So, as we have disactivated the host function, to avoid the conflicts between Cubase's sequencer and Spark's internal sequencer, there won't be any possible automation. To solve that, you need to reactivate the host function. By doing so, the selected pattern on Spark and the pattern now found on a Cubase's MIDI track will play at once. The trick is to select an internal empty pattern on the Spark. Let's take the last D16 pattern and erase its content. Now, by pushing play on Cubase, we notice that the sequence starts also on Spark and is also noticeable even on the physical controller. Though, there's no conflict since Spark's internal sequencer is completely empty. Even if empty, it enables all the slicer's modes to become active. For instance, let's add a little bit crusher on one spot on the sequence. Here we go, now we hear our filtering movement and our bit crusher. If the filter and the slicer can be heard at the same time, it's not possible for the moment to use simultaneously two different slicer functions. Pay attention to future Arturia's updates. Now, let's see how to record Spark directly on a Cubase track by playing on the pads of the physical controller. Let's disactivate the host function. Make sure that in the MIDI inputs, it's really the Spark input that is used. The MIDI output is, on the other hand, not necessary for the moment, let's leave it on non-connected. Here you go, all that remains is to arm the MIDI track and to start the Cubase recording and to play something on the pads. Now, to hear what we've just recorded, you have to, of course, link the MIDI output to the Spark module. That's it. We can, after, of course, quantize our MIDI datas or change their places, timing, etc. It's possible to leave in MIDI input the Spark and in MIDI output the Spark also, like this on Cubase. Though, in this configuration, there's a risk that for some percussions, particularly for the hi-hats, for example, that we hear some little sound parasites during the sound's trigger and not at the replay once recorded. It's because with this configuration, Cubase sends a double MIDI trigger. If these little quicks, sometimes inaudible, bother you during the recording, you need to record as we did at the beginning, that is, by disconnecting the MIDI output during the take. However, at the second listening, you need to think to put it back. <laughs> 